Hey Taurus, I think we're live. How are you? This is Mary Ellen coming to you from Moonrise Cottage on a sort of soft, cloudy, overcast day here. I'm here to do your reading for the month of July 2020. We're going to talk about the eclipses coming forward on the 4th and 5th of July. It's uh, the inception point. We've returned to our Okay, my guides are saying our creation point, things like that. I'm going to get into it. So I just wanted to show you the intensity of this reading right out of the gate. Those are the oracle cards. Look what you're engaged in. Beautiful Taurus. It's astounding. So when the reading's done, I'm going to you know pause for a minute and make a place to clip the video, and I'm going to come over and talk to you folks in the chat room. All right? So um, look at that. You are undergoing a massive beautiful, led by the universe, transformation. And you are sailing straight into it. So the swan is everything you think it is. It is about transformation. The ugly duckling turns into the swan. There is some part of you, Taurus, when I look at all the cards that came out, there's something within you. And it's a particular point within you that is transforming because of the universal energy that's going on. Many of you are going to, uh, well, my guys are correcting me. They're saying most of you, all of you are going to feel this in your life, in yourself, in your being, a personal transformation. And it's going to set up a chain of, of my guys are saying like a chain reaction. It's going to happen inside your relationships with your family, with your job, with your lover, with your spouse. So there's a sort of what the words my guides were saying when it comes to relationship. And we're going to talk about both, well, all three, the sacred triad, right? Your place in the universe, you as an actor for change, your place in your life, and your place in your relationships. Because of the eclipse that's coming forward and the astrological elements that are present, you are literally transforming, no question about it, into a more beautiful... My guides just said more competent version of yourself. And you're going to pull your relationships. I think you're going to be requiring your relationships to shift and change. There's going to be a fight. You're going to have some battles about this, Taurus. And that's part of what's transforming. So when you get into this, into the range of this energy, look at that. See the moon? Check it out. You see yourself being carried? Look, I mean, this is just astounding. So we see some storm clouds there, but we're, we're looking at the heavenly realm and the way you're carried on the wings of the universe, carrying you as an agent of change, your destination into the sacred realm. It's kind of giving me a chill, as it always does. Taurus, because you're so beautiful. Oh my God, look at you. That's what you're doing. Just give in to it, Taurus. Don't fight it. <laughs> do not be dug in. Okay? So what I'm going to do uh, is remind everybody that all the links are below. The special um, COVID-19, you know, slashed pricing for a reading is there. You can still come and get a reading. It's 40 bucks. I've made it as cheap as I possibly can. Okay? A lot of links below. Join us for the Global Meditation for Harmony. Um, we are coming forward into the days of the fulcrum of the shift and change. So, let's talk about love, okay? Let's talk about love for a moment in all the ways I just referenced it. Here's the theme of your reading reflected in the Celtic Wisdom Tarot. <laughs> My guys are saying, sometimes they're a little snarky. Any questions? You see you and your lover? Sitting in the light of the full moon, communicating telepathically, holding each other's energy, allowing that flow that the Two of Cups has, you know, pouring each pouring some of their own energy into the other's cup to bring forward um, a sacred emergence of energy, the energy of this love bond with temperance, an alchemical moment with the power of the full moon. And the illumination of that which comes forward into your knowing on the sacred rivers, the sacred waters, if you will, of the moon, the light of the moon that flows into the connection. See that? 
Woo wee. Telepathic communication. New growth is coming forward in this relationship, whatever it's about. So it is about you and you. It's about you and your community, you and your job, you and your family, you and all of humanity. So this is how you serve humanity with your particular energy in this moment. That's the way to stand firm. Stand firm and stable in the love element. So here's what uh, your energy is under the light of all that messaging. Look at that, Taurus. See that road you've come down? All the battles you've had? You know, uh, I, I'm in Aries rising, and I kind of feel, and I have Earth, I have Virgo. Okay, so I kind of feel you, Taurus. Because we're having this full moon eclipse in the sign of Capricorn, all the air signs are going to be affected. Your propensity as a fighter in whatever way you are, when you get riled up, right? We all know what happens if you step into the pasture with the bull. It's that kind of stuff. A lot of fighting ensues. You've injured yourself. You've injured other people. The part of you that holds your power in this way is what's being transformed. And I'm not here to criticize you. That's why I was outing myself as a nurse sign with Aries. Oh my God, can the steam come out of my nostrils? Woo! Just, woo, you should see. It can. And so slowly, we're all morphing into the kinder, gentle, more loving version or whatever the way the power is stacked up in your chart. So, Taurus, it may be that you've been in a relationship with yourself and clearly with somebody else, and there's been a lot of wounding, and it's really sad. So it's been going on for some of you for a long time. Your nature is being transformed so that you can be more like that instead of like this inside your love relationship. So these two guys were sacred brothers. In the story of the deck, I think they're actually cousins. And, a, a, you know, a spell is on them, meaning the way we are, the way we were. And they just fight every day. They can't help it. So they fight to the death. Somebody dies every day. The, the um, energy of those battles trickles down from the heart chakra into the flow of love energy in your life. When one passes, the other one is seriously grieved, tries to fix the wounding at the heart chakra to bring this person back, but it's too late. Then the next morning, they awaken and they start again. Somebody else gets wounded. There's some kind of a cycle that many of you have been engaged in in this way, you know, including the way a Taurus will do its life until it has a moment where it is able to connect with the sacred realm and reorder its power if that's what the need is. I'm going through it as an Aries. It's just time for us all to use the higher order of the natural set point that we have. So that's what you're going through. Your relationship, if you are in one, you're going through that. It might be at work, might be with your family, might be with your neighbors, whatever. Something is being transformed because you don't want it anymore. It hurts too much. You're dreaming about this and you're experiencing that. So that's coming to an end, Taurus. I'm here to tell you. Because look, because you are riding the cosmic wave and all these things, hang on, it's dark in here because it's starting to rain. Let's see if I can turn the light up a little bit. There you go. You're going to have this moment when you're going to literally, thank you, Spirit, because you're riding the cosmic wave, you're going to discover yourself. The quest of art, that's the Ten of Cups. So, you know, whoever your love partner is, it might be that that person, might be a water sign, actually, is able to telecommunicate with you the vibration of the love element so that it can finally reach you. Because there you sit with the sacred feminine, you dressed in blue, transforming. Because this sacred partner is just filling you with the sacred illumination of the moon in order to end a cycle. So some of you really, you might be ending it. Some of you are ending something because there's been a hell of a lot of battle going on for a long time. You're exhausted. And this, I didn't say it, but look, that's the five of swords. You know that moment 
in the traditional terror where we see a person, they're engaged in some kind of a fight, and everybody just walks away. I say, here, take my sword. They drop their swords, and they just walk away, and they look back and go, you know, whatever. It's not. This fight is, it's, it's not fruitful. Sometimes fighting is good. So, you know, my guys were telling me as I was setting up the video that, that the theme of the video is um, the good fight. The fight that brings change. So many of you, because you are stubborn and fabulous, you're not ready to let go of this relationship. You're ready to let go of the fighting. You're willing and able to transform yourself. That's the quest you're on. That's the, the wave that you're riding, this cosmic wave, because that's what's present in the universe at this point. We see it all over social media. Our hearts are cracked open. Your heart is cracked open because you feel the pain of your sacred other, including all the humans that are here. Love it. And that carries you into the upper world. This is beautiful, Taurus. Thank you. So you, you set out on this quest when all of this finally gets released through the eclipse and, and the days coming up to the eclipse, you might be already feeling it. We're still in June. Today's the 27th. So Venus has gone direct. That's helping, isn't it? <laughs> My guys are saying, isn't it? You feeling it? So the energy is starting to um, accumulate in this direction. And you set off on this sacred quest, the Ten of Cups. You're looking for yourself, Taurus. Where does my heart lie? Why do I have these battles? How can I stop? How can I be more connected to my heart so that I can act from there when I'm angry instead of acting out of, you know, right, the cats are laughing at me. You know, like an Aries, like she does sometimes. You know, like an Aries. Just, you know, you light the fuse and it's just, there's no stamping it out sometimes. Chain reaction happens. Same thing happens with the Taurus. So you're being sent off on this sacred quest on the inside of your being because you're in touch with your own sorrow and your own heartbreak. And guess what? You're going to be successful. Look at that. Ten of Cups. Sacred Salmon of All Wisdom, the Water Element. So this reading is coming out on this day. As a result of a reading that I did for an incredible sacred Pisces entity earlier in the day, which inspired me to um, do the Pisces reading. So if that's there, why don't you go look at it, okay? And then I was talking with my guides and I thought, all right, well, what do you, what do you want? You know, what, what should be next? Because I don't have a plan. I do it based on sacred inspiration. And my guide said, you got to do Taurus. And then all the earth signs will be out and they will understand how this element affects them because it's a Capricorn full moon eclipse. It's a very powerful one, very powerful. In the days when Venus has gone direct and we have Mars and Aries and things are hot, aren't they? Whew, I can tell by your reading that it's hot in your life. So trust yourself, trust the inner leading that wants to bring forward your existence as a love energy partner in your own life and with your beautiful partner so that you can find that beautiful love that you know exists between you and this other person. And if you discover that no, it does not, you're going to cut it and you're going to walk away. I don't think that's what's going to happen for most of you because my guys are saying, because blessedly, you're stubborn, aren't you, Taurus? I know. One of my best friends is a Taurus. I love the Taurus people. So there you go, look, another quest, two tens, right after each other. That's the Ten of Pentacles. So the Ten of Cups and the Ten of Pentacles reflect each other, don't they? This person has made their way to the mountaintop, and they are in direct communication with the guides and the angels, the ascended masters, the Akashic records. There's a sacred bowl of all wisdom, out of which every spiritual intention upon this realm arises and returns back to. Taurus, you're making me cry today. I'm getting all choked up. Look how beautiful you are, Taurus. When you come into the highest order of divinity of your set point, this is what you look like. You're not a bull in a field ready to smash your horns into anybody who steps into your realm. That's over. I love this. I really, truly 
love this. So, how do you get there? Really interesting how this came out today. Check it out. So this is the bridge card. This is the energy that connects all of this desire and passion that you have to transform and have your transformation. You're going to be pulled into it by the tractor beam of the full moon. I promise you that. And you have Venus on your side because she's gone direct to lead us out of these retrogrades. There's no mistake in the way this is happening. So look closely and philosophically at the astrology. So there you are. You see yourself doing battle with yourself, Taurus? There's the beast. This young man had to go out into the forest and do battle with a wild boar with no protection. So you're going to have to put your protections down. That's what you... I'm sorry, my guides are correcting me. You will make the choice to put your protections down. That's what that's reflective of. That's why this transforms. Because you put your protections down. And you go out into your own life, into your love relationship, to do battle with the beast that's causing all the disruption in order to win, because this young man wins, warrior of knowledge. Okay. It's going to be a long process. It's been a long process. We already know. We already know that. But you're bringing it into a culmination. And you're going to succeed. The sharp horns of that beast not going to hurt you anymore. You're not going to hurt yourself anymore. You're going to be able to stand in your in your life, um, in all the places that you intersect with other people, and most especially in your love aspect if you're partnered. And you're just gonna you're just gonna use your wits to win this. Bring the prizes back to the castle. That's what this is all about. And he ends up marrying the king's daughter. So when this card came out, something fell out right behind it. Look. That's beautiful. So that is the judgment of battle, the four of swords. You're going in deep, and you are going to lie in repose, and you're going to put your weapons down. I'm getting so choked up. You're going to put your weapons down. It is the way that you protect yourself that has caused the problem. Beautiful Taurus. Clearly when we see how this reading's coming out. But because everybody's heart is cracked open, yours is cracked open too. And you're going to have some very deep introspection. And you're going to ride the wave of the universal Piscean energy that's here. And this is going to transport you. You're going in... Where is it? You see that sacred hut? You're going to finish this. Then you're going to go into the sacred hut. Where are you going to have your healing? And you're going to lie in repose. Because you are going to slay the beast within you that causes the challenges that you have in your life. And you are going to come into balance. Do you see how this is split open? Right down the central meridian and re -sown. Healing. That's the balancer of harmony. <laughs> I love this. I love it so much. That is the goddess Elena. She helps seafaring vessels find their way. And you've got all this water element stuff and the upper atmosphere, Gemini, carrying its forward in the North Node. All of that you have in this reading. So there's new growth. The fruits of these efforts are blossoming in your life. It's fabulous. I love it. And so you know what? Here's the next thing. When you go through this transition, there's your partner waiting for you in the marriage tent. That's the Four of Wands. Whether you want to get married or you're going to get married or not, irrelevant. It's the sacredness of the place that matters. So there you are in this beautiful summer weather, at least here in the Northern Hemisphere. You're going to sit there while you're in this Four of Swords repose. You're going to come into balance because of that effort. And then you're going to be able to have some judgment about the love in your life. Four of Wands. How do I, what did I do? What did my partner do? How did we get into this situation? What the hell's going on in the world? What the hell is going on in the world, right? That's where you're going to be, Taurus, because you're so powerful. And your power transformed into love energy upon this earth while you have the great awakener Uranus in your sign. This is where you're going. And it's it bodes extremely well for all of your love relationships, wherever love 
emanates from you toward another being and toward the world. So some of you are going to bring your relationship 180 degrees. You're going to turn it around, Taurus, because you're going to be available for that effort. You're going to desire it, and you're going on the quest to find it, and you're going to reach your goal. Okay? In a very sacred way with your partner. And, you know, when it's funny because this has been coming up. This next card's been coming up. When you do that, in a Seinfeld kind of way, you're going to get your hand back. Okay, lock. <laughs> you know, when you're fighting and scrapping, you got nothing. You know it. We all know it. There comes over you a massive healing because of this journey. See the full moon? Trust it, beautiful Taurus. You got Uranus. You're going to be awakened. And when you are awakened, you're going to grow your hand back. This is the king of swords. You're going to get total clarity about that. In all the mystical ways, you're meant to have clarity about that in your heart and your soul. And you're going to come back into the righteous, stable form of power that you were blessed with when you came through to this realm. It's very exciting. It's very tender. There's a real hush in the house today. And this is how the two readings that I did today came out, just like this. So beautiful. Total clarity and redemption. This, my guides are saying, and they've been saying it, this is your redemption sign, right? The redemption song of your life. So you might break up, but you're breaking up to make up. You're breaking up with yourself. You're breaking up with your way of being. You are coming into a more highly ordered vision, my guides are saying, vision and version of yourself. And the outcome of that effort is that. The courtship with sacred knowledge. See what's happening to the card? Never seen that before. Look what's happening when I hold it up to the camera. That's how much radiant energy you're carrying because of the Uranus in your first house. So that is the Three of Pentacles. Okay, hang on. What you're literally doing when you finish this quest and you have your success moment and you are reordered and healed, you step into a sacred relationship, the sacred triad, the spirit realm, and you offer yourself as a gift to the angels that you find in that place. And you start on a new road and you're never turning back to ours, never. Because you will not be the same. Once the transformation comes over you and you see your full self in the mirror, your full self, my guys are saying, you don't ever want to go back from that. That's about traveling into the mystical place in the universe through a sacred portal. That's what the story is in this, in the um, in my text about this card. So you're going to align yourself with the universe in all these ways. And you are going to have travel through the sacred bowl of all healing. This card helps you understand that you are at the ending and the beginning of a cycle. And this is the justice card. You're going to get justice in your life, inside your being. Because this is about setting the soul free after, fi after it finishes the triple spiral of its existence and comes into the learning that it's meant to have. You will enter in To a new circuit of existence and when you do this part of the justice of the situation that you know there's a lot being demanded of you right now the justice is that you will finish this step into a new a brand new soul circuit your soul is going to be made ma oh i can't speak made free from this stuff you're going to be free from it in order to have a new existence start on a new journey in a very sacred way. And it's this. So let's pick from the bag of runes. Taurus, wow. Astounding. Let's see what piece of advice the guys can give for you, Taurus. Beautiful Taurus. Oh my God. Whoo wee. I just am so excited to see how this evolves for you. So drop some messages below. 
let me know what you're feeling going into these days. Hang on, my guys want that one. Let's see what that is. Yeah. Ooh, spirit, thank you. All right, that is Hagalaz. This rune has no reverse. No matter which way you hold it, it's the same. So Hagalaz is about sacred disruption. Okay? Pretty amazing. Let's check the book. I want you to hear the words from the book. It's really beautiful. It's, it is a sacred shift and change that comes over you. You sort of, you, you, in some way you have no, it's just happening. You don't have control over this event, just like we don't have control over what's happening in the universe, except by getting into our um, sacred identity. It's that that brings forward shift and change. The guides are saying things like, out of the minds of humans, you know, manifesting what it is we want. So there's Hagalaz. Let me see. I can't tell if it's in the camera. There it is. Okay. Elemental power. Elemental power. It's resounding in my head like an echo. My guys just keep saying it. Okay, so change, freedom, invention, and liberation are all attributes of this room. Drawing it indicates a pressing need within your psyche to break free from constricting identification. Thank you, Spirit. Mm. Whew. With material reality and to experience the world of the archetypical mind. Taurus, I don't even want to read any more words. That's what it's about, okay? In essence, that is the most important part of this passage in this book, okay? The rune of elemental disruption. Disruption of events that seem to be totally beyond your control when you start to awaken. Hagalaz has only an upright position, and yet it always operates through reversals. When you draw this room, expect disruption because it is the great awakener. Although the form the awakening takes may vary, you may feel yourself gradually coming to your senses, as if you were emerging from a deep sleep. Then again, the onset of this power may be so forceful as to rip away the fabric of what you previously knew as your reality, your security, your self-identity. Wow. Including your understanding of self, your work, your relationships, and your beliefs. Disruption takes many forms, so a relationship may fail. Plans may go awry. A source of supply may dry up, but do not be dismayed. Whether you created the disruption or it comes from outside sources, you are not without power in this situation. Your inner strength, the will that you have funded in your life until now, provides enough support and guidance. At this time, when everything that you've always taken for granted shifts and changes and is being challenged, this is one of the cycle of runes that leads to sacred initiation. It is a point of learning along your path. And the term radical discontinuity best describes its action when Hagalaz is at its most forceful. So Taurus, my goodness, Thank you, as always, for being who you are, for being what you are, and for being strong enough and stubborn enough to choose love. Taurus, how much do I love you? Let me count the ways. <laughs> That's what my guides are saying. Okay, so Taurus, thanks so much for being here. I really, truly appreciate it. God is willing, I will be here in uh, August. Oh my gosh. I think I've been saying July. I'll be here in August to chat with you some more and to channel some messages for the guides. And so until then, uh, I thank you very much and I'll look forward to seeing you. Drop some messages. I want to hear what's going on in your life. 
Thanks, Taurus.